Dancing? Yeah. <laughs> Dance is a way of of expressing something, of telling somebody something about yourself. And that's true for a young ballet dancer who's trying to embody their technique with a sense of spirit and energy, connect to a huge audience. Or if you're just reaching across from chair to chair and trying to connect as humans in your storytelling, it's all the same. Dancing, like music, is a universal language. You don't have to speak the language, but the beats just get to your soul. I love dancing. It's a way to free myself. I just get into the mood and I just kind of lose myself in the music. I just love it. <laughs> Dancing? Yeah. Me? Hmm. Okay, give it a shot. One of the great, great gifts in my life is that I had the opportunity as a little girl, age six, to go to a community center and take ballet classes for free, take dance classes for free. And uh, it made me feel the way many, many of our community participants today describe themselves as feeling after a dance class, whether they're eight or 80 years of age and that is that you feel more at home in yourself and you feel more eager to contribute to the world. All right, three friends. One, find somebody new. Two, two, three. And a yeah. One, two, Sharing Dance Older Adults is part of our community dance programs here at Canada's National Ballet School. Um, it's designed to be artistic dance opportunities accessible to older adults who may have certain physical or cognitive challenges in their life, but the program is really centered around the art form. It's about giving them an opportunity to access the art form and experience it. I thought dance was some moves. Yeah. It, it is moves, but it is coming from from well inside you. Oh yes, look at these moves. Canada's National Ballet School does have a much broader base of community programs than most professional ballet academies. And this has been absolutely intentional. It isn't a question we get often, why does a ballet school focus so much on programs for community. And um, I think the question, the question comes down to this fundamental um, gift that we have in uh, pursuing dance and having dance be a part of our lives. And a gift is only something you can treasure when it's a gift you give as well. So we feel privileged to engage people in dance, to rekindle people's passion for dance, to help them find it for the first time, to spark that um, passion for dance. And whether we're working with young ballet dancers who are refining that skill to a level that can tell amazing stories in huge theaters across the world, or we're going to meet someone in a long-term care facility and helping them tell us who they are, it's, it's this privilege to give the gift of movement to each other. What was your favorite way to dance? This way. Yes, the rolling. Oh, how fantastic. That was beautiful. So Karen, what, what type of music do you like to dance to? Any, any music. Any, any dance, any music. I really love it. But you have to find the right man to do it with. <laughs> <laughs> it brings out the good in them. It brings out the good in them to dance in. Pressing the palms together, lower to your heart. No. Try that again, breathing in. We are trying to focus on creating um, an artistic experience that's accessible. So we may understand that somebody may have challenges that maybe make a traditional dance experience um, a little bit less accessible. 
So we're, we're trying to address that, but still provide very much that artistic experience and some of the joyful opportunity that comes with, with creating dance and, and developing it through practicing it. My heart to you. Good. My heart to you. Art's the great unifier across gender, race, uh, you know, class, etc. It, it brings everyone together, and, and hopefully dance can do that for this segment of the population that sometimes actually doesn't, doesn't necessarily have a voice. And out. Then we'll gather up all of that energy, bring it into our hearts, and just take a moment. Movement is our first human language. You know, when we're young, when we're little babies, yes, we can cry to get what we need, but if we want um, attention, we reach out, we grab on, we pull in. So it's, it's a language that everybody has, but it takes a little bit of a spark to really feel that ownership and agency. And when we're talking about older adults living in care, the act of having agency and choice over your body is such a powerful and important opportunity to say, how do you choose to move? What do you want to tell me? So I can feel the power that giving them that opportunity for creativity and expression creates in the room. A lot of the residents that I don't normally see sometimes dancing are more engaged. So that's good. That's a really good thing. Well, I, I, I think that is good. I think it's a good exercise. It depending on on, 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 on on who is there. Most of these people are slightly elderly, so you've got to to move it around to suit. But this morning was good. You know, you get people involved. That opportunity to move together to to music to to, to rhythm can can really help people feel connected. Um, but also, I think, you know, speaking specifically to sharing dance older adults, one thing we, for example, pay particular attention to is eye line, um, which is, is, you know, relevant for all dancers when you're, when you're focusing and trying to express something. But uh, in, for example, sharing dance older adults, the eye line may connect you to somebody else where you're cued to find somebody else in the room to look at, to connect with. And I think if we're talking specifically about our, our dancers living with dementia, that may not happen a lot for them in the day. There might be somebody caring for them that comes from behind to move them, or somebody they're seated, maybe in a wheelchair, and somebody from above is talking to them. So that opportunity even to, to make that eye contact, I think, is something meaningful that they, that they, they don't necessarily have um, as much access to anymore. I just love looking at somebody. Big eyes, and everybody's looking at them. Oh, you just, fantastic. Just, you just munch up your oh. I think life is most meaningful when we look for ways to contribute to something that is greater than any one person, that, that is collective and is universal. So the more that we explored this, the more it's become crystal clear that if Canada's National Ballet School doesn't do this, then who's going to do that? And it is our responsibility with all of our privileges to uh, make sure that quality of life is as high as possible for everyone. Yes, you can do this. There you go. People living with dementia are highly stigmatized in society. They are offered limited opportunity to participate in social life, to make meaningful contributions, to pursue meaningful relationships and activities. In our dance classes, we refer to everyone as a dancer. Um, so it was very intentional when we said, you know, dancer, not, not dementia, to kind of just turn that on its head a little bit because yes, there are challenges and, and, and dementia can be very difficult for the person experiencing it, for their loved ones, for the people caring for them, but that doesn't mean the person doesn't have the capacity to experience joy, to express themselves, to be creative, to be playful, to be silly. One, two, three, here it goes. Yeehaw! One. I was known as having two left feet. <laughs> 
having dementia does not mean that you you're not alive anymore. It means that you 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 need to start doing things differently. You know, you do things differently. You need simplify steps. You know, you need people to still love you and respect you and just allow you to be. People living with dementia, like all of us, have great capacity to experience and create joy. Oh, it makes me feel wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And, you know, I feel, I feel like, you know, singing along to cer you know, certain songs and stuff. What was your favorite movement? Oh gosh, I don't know because I loved all of it. Oh good! It was just wonderful. And I heard your singing voice all the way from over there. Are you, you someone who likes to sing? Yeah, I do. I could tell. Yeah. I could hear your beautiful singing voice all loud and strong all the way from over there. Thank you for sharing your voice with us. And thank you for no noticing oh, it. Right. I didn't even notice it myself until you mentioned well, it. Well, I thought your voice was beautiful and it well, added so much to our dancing. Thank you. Stigma creates social exclusion for people living with dementia and it deprives them of their dignity and their rights as citizens. Stigma is fueled by the assumption that with dementia, you are incapable of purposeful and meaningful interaction. You have no awareness of your surroundings and that the neurological impairment that's at the core of dementia leads to a total erasure of the person. So stigma creates significant harm and Challenging stigma is a key public health priority across national and international settings, and increasingly the arts are advocated as a way to help to achieve that. You can reach to somebody. Hello. And reach. Back to our oh, I feel happy. I feel, I feel good. I feel the same as the other people. Because I have, I have a inferiority complex. So when I see them doing it and I can do it, well, I said, I'm the same as the other people. I lose my inferiority complex. Last time we'll gather everything in. So what we do here at Alexis Lodge, there's a lot of dancing because music connects with you no matter what stage of disease, it's just something that touches the soul. Dancing actually uh, encourages engagement and you know, where you actually see residents verbalizing when they were not talking before or just, you know, someone, maybe someone is upset or crying, uh, uh, you, you put on that music and, you know, you start dancing with them and they become so happy. It's just really soothing. The research that our team has done and others has shown that people living with dementia have tremendous capacity to be creative. Even when speech is slow, broken or incoherent, people living with dementia can still express themselves through song, through musical engagement, and through dance. Dance can be a really important means of connection for someone who has difficulties with verbal expression. And that's because dance so beautifully supports nonverbal communication. And open. You know, I just like seeing the smile on their faces, especially with one of the residents, Naomi. She's not able to move the way she used to, but if she can't move her hand, I'll help her and move her hand, you know, and help her with her feet, just move her feet. It just makes her laugh and light up, you know? She really enjoys it. I know a lot of people think that just because you have, like, dementia, that you're not able to do things the way you used to or you're not smart like you used to, it's not true. They're able to do everything they used to do, but at a slower pace. They just need someone to be patient with them. That's it. Moving a little bit. Dance can offer so much more than therapeutic outcomes when guided by a relational approach that prioritizes relationships, life enrichment, flourishing, 
dance brings us into relationship with each other. And I think this is so important because imagination, um, joy, vitality, humor, drama, playfulness, all of these things are connections to life itself. So I think it's really imperative that people living with dementia be given equal opportunity to engage with dance and with the arts more generally, precisely because of how they can support connection to life itself. We've got to find that inner part, that inner core. As far as dancing goes, how do I, how, how did I feel? It, it, it reminded me that I was interested in dancing in my, in my high school years. I'd forgotten about that. Oh. And then when I was made aware of the behind the scenes, the deeper level of dancing, I said, wow, that was the missing part. And I loved, I, I, I used to love dancing. I used to love to go. I don't talk about the, the arts, the, 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 the stage, but never integrating the background, the personal journey, the expression, the choreography, because that was not considered to be cool. For a boy, for a girl, it's fine. So it's a bit of regret because I think I could do it to make it integrate with everyday life. As you look at the history of dance, um, it's been part of communities and that has brought to the surface specialists, but it has also kept the community healthy and whole. That um, when people say, well, well, why have you added on community dance? Um, it's never been an add-on. It was just finding a way to recognize something that has actually been part of history and healthy communities always. The music is clearly something that whether you're six or 106, the, the music finds your body and carries it into movement. And then of course the other thing that does that is the human connection. It's the ability to create a gesture and have that received. And I think it's fundamentally more powerful than we realize. Dance is that place where all of us can just be one and just have mutual respect for each other. I hope that people see the extraordinary capacity that people living with dementia have to be creative, to be imaginative, to be funny and playful. These are characteristics that are not typically ascribed to people living with dementia. So I think that this can really importantly challenge the stigma associated with dementia and I hope that people see the power of dance to support these critical connections to life itself. Just because somebody has um, dementia doesn't mean their life's over. Guess what? You just start a new chapter in your own story. Just make it the best chapter ever. I, I, I'm in, in really love it. I can't say any other way when I'm dancing and doing things like that, I'm very happy. <laughs>